director of our male outreach initiative. I got somewhat of a <clears throat> different perspective. Uh, when I look at where I've been and what I've done and, and, and where I've came where I came from, when I came to the States, my family lived in South Carolina. And in South Carolina at that time was pretty much black and white. Not a lot of Hispanics there. Uh, I consider myself a Hispanic, but when you look at the breakdown of, of what is Hispanic, uh, you're going to find millions of different definitions. Uh, there's different countries, different cultures, even border, you know, being a mile apart, uh, there's lots of differences. Uh, I'm actually from Brazil, but I do speak, speak Spanish. I've always had the perspective of an outsider looking in. And the weird thing about being Hispanic in this country, especially right now, is that a lot of Hispanics don't have a voice. And their voice is usually shut out because they feel as if they're not a part of what's going on. Now, growing up in South Carolina, I did experience racism, segregation. Uh, the funny thing is, my neighbor to the right was white. His name was David Davis. And my neighbor to the left was black. His name was Maurice. I played with both of them, but they couldn't play with each other. And I always asked, you know, being six, seven years old, I've always asked my parents, why, why is that? Why, why can't we all play together? And sometimes we would actually play through the fence. Uh, I remember going to a lake in South Carolina with Maurice, and we were all told we couldn't swim there because of, of Maurice. So coming in as an outsider looking in, for me that was just very strange. And, and right off the bat, it, it, it made a, a huge impression uh, on how I look at life today. Um, for me, it's always been about economics. When, when you're in different countries, it's really about how much money you have. Uh, and a lot of times the economics can sometimes overlook color boundaries and, and, and different, different sets of boundaries. I think that there is a writ, that there is an obligation uh, for people to, to reach back and, and do, and, and that's sort of what I'm doing with my life, because I feel that there's not enough of folks doing that today. When you look at the Hispanic community here, um, there's a very small group of folks that are actually giving back. And when we look to, for advocates to step up to the plate and assume leadership positions, very few do that. I, I, I can think of one right now, Robin Gomez with the city of Clearwater, wears many hats and does many things. And he's a real strong advocate for the Mexican community. But when you look at others, there, there really isn't. So for me, it goes down to economics, being an outsider looking in and looking at the changes and seeing the future as to where this country is going. I think that there's a lot of changes and, and we're, we're heading there pretty, pretty fast at a pretty fast speed.